Oh, it's a lovely morning here at Twin Stick Garage. So, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, um, what I'm building right now is a Smokey and the Bandit truck and trailer replica. I've been working pretty hard on this trailer the last few weeks uh, in a desperate attempt to get it ready in time for the Let's Go Truck Show that is only a few weeks away. I've kind of committed that I'm going to have this truck and trailer there. So, I'm really close. I know the last few weeks has been nothing but snowman trailer but that's uh that's kind of where my my focus and my energy is right now so what i've got going on is the wrap is ordered um that's going to be a few weeks getting the production made it's going to come in 18 different sheets that my wrapper tony is going to put on there and press over all the bumps and the rivets and that's instantly going to turn it in from this to the one used in the movie So I'm really excited about that. A few more things that need to be done though as well is the brakes. So when we swapped out this tandem set with the ones that were in here, we just ended up hacking off the airlines. So I need to actually reconnect those. And then what I wanted to do is, obviously in an earlier episode, I had the brakes. I put new brakes in the, in the drums there but I didn't do, I haven't attempted or haven't tackled swapping out the 30-30 brake chambers and the slack adjusters and, and running new lines. So I wanna do that. I gotta get the lights operational. This guy is, uh, is a little hurting, so I'm gonna try and remount that. I've got some new tail lights that I need to put on. Um, got some new bumpers that I'll put on there as well. And yeah, see how far I get. I'll probably have to start the the old snowman truck up here and uh, wheel it out and then back it in because I'll need air to test and then obviously the lights as well to make sure the lights are working so a little more work on the snowman trailer but like I always say any progress is progress oh yeah and one more thing that needs doing is uh, to install the fake thermal king reefer shell on the front of the trailer So my friend Don Gratz said that she may be able to stop by today and bring her forklift out, which would be ideal because that way we could kind of lift it in a controlled fashion, hold it in place, drill the six holes, and then mount it on the trailer. So fingers crossed she's able to get by today with her forklift. If not, I guess we'll have to try for the next weekend. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on the, on the brakes and the lights and see how far I get. And if she shows up, that would be fantastic. We'll get that reefer on there as well. So I went down to Fleet Break and Jesse over there hooked me up with all this good stuff and I went on a bit of a spending spree but sometimes you need to spend money to finish projects and this was one of those instances. So this doesn't look like it but this was, uh, I don't want to say how much all this was. It was a lot but at least I have all the stuff that I need. So these are new 3030 brake chambers that I'm going to mount under there and you'll notice that obviously there's a, there's a spring in here for those that don't know and We'll go underneath and I'll show you, but the old school ones, so you can unbolt this one and this just replaces the pancake seal. So this isn't the dangerous end. This is the Crocodile Dundee dangerous end because there's a spring in here that preloads and that applies the parking brakes when there is no air. Now these newer ones, they actually have a sealed ring. So you can't inadvertently or mistakenly undo the bolt and have this spring come out because if this spring lets go, you're looking at, I mean, it can go right through the wall of my shop for sure. So they even say, if you read the instructions, that when you're working on these things, you don't want to be working facing it, obviously. You want to be off to the side. So if something does let go, I mean, not so much on the newer ones, but definitely on the older ones, if there's some damage to the ring that holds it in there or the, the cup that, that's keeping that holding, holding that in there as well, if there's some cracks or some rust, the spring could release at any time. So you always wanna work it off to the side. So this is a 30-30 brake chamber. It has an inch and a half stroke. And I'm gonna show you how, when I get the, the old ones out of there, how to bolt this in and then set it up. 
But again, if you're not familiar with these, uh, I would suggest going to a professional because there's a lot of danger here. And of course with brakes, you wanna get them set up correctly in order to stop the vehicle. So if you don't know what you're doing, go talk to someone that does, um, get yourself educated. There's lots of good videos, lots of good information on the internet on how to set these up properly and how to work with these safely. So I got the new brake chambers. I got another uh, cable because of course I sacrificed the old one when I hooked the Kenworth up to the camper. So I needed a new cable. Um, bunch of lights, whole bunch of good stuff. And then these are the, the new slack adjusters. So I went with the old school manual adjustment. They're not the automatic. So the newer style, they actually, as the brakes, as the, as the brake shoes wear, and this keeps going farther and farther out, it'll keep automatically adjusting back into tolerance. You're still supposed to check them every once in a while. But these old school ones, the way we would do it when I was trucking is you'd have to go underneath in the morning when you're doing your pre-chip uh, checks and you'd have to actually go and do a um, full on and then a quarter turn off. So I'll, I'll show you how to set that up as well. I'm just kind of old school and I like these because they're cheaper and I don't always trust the automatic adjusters. I kind of like the fact that a person needs to go underneath there and, and make sure they're within tolerance because of course if you get pulled over in a truck inspection and they're out of spec, it becomes a pretty big ticket. And aside from that, I mean, it's not safe because you're not able to stop the vehicle either. So want to make sure your brakes are in check. Uh, what else did I get? Yeah, I was mentioning the new bumpers. So these are just little rubber bumpers for the back. Now it appears I should have bought four of them because there's holes here that almost look like they were welded closed. They did kind of a crappy job. So maybe I'll go back and get two more of these, but I figured that'll look nice and sharp. And then some LED lights and a bunch of other goodies that I need to install. So I guess with that, I'll, I'll stop talking and I'll actually crawl underneath there and start doing some work and taking out the old stuff. All right, so first up, what I need to do is take the slack or the tension out of the slack adjusters. Now a guy could just zip cut these with the grinder, but there's a load on there. So it's better to, to get rid of all the potential energy when you're working on stuff. So obviously there's no air in the trailer right now in the system. There's no truck attached to it and the brakes are fully applied on. So I'm, what I'm doing, what I did was I chalked all the wheels so the trailer doesn't roll because these are the only brakes that are actually applied right now. I had this set up for safety in an earlier episode. So I rigged up a chuck to the park brake side. So what I'm gonna do now is put air on and apply air. And what it's gonna do is overcome the pressure of the spring that's pushing to apply the brakes fully on. And it's gonna pull that back. So you see the slack adjusters move back. So now what I can do is I can take the tension off. Okay, so now when I take the air off, that was loud. All right, so now that the, the tension or the, the pressure is off of the push rod, I can safely cut that. Now again, you could use this to measure for your new ones if you're confident it was set up correctly. But I don't need to do that because I'm going to put the new ones on there and then I'm going to measure from the center line and I've got a procedure to do that just to make sure it is set up properly. And you see it cuts it real nice when you take the, the tension off. Otherwise what will happen is if you try and cut these when they're loaded up, It'll bind up on your uh, on your grind or cutting disc. Okay, on the other side. Perfect. So there's a little snap ring on here that holds it on the spline shaft. Okay. Are you gonna come off of there? Tell no, to the no, no, no. There is a special puller, a slack adjuster puller that grabs here and then it pushes on that. Of course, I don't have one of those. So we're gonna have to do this the old school way with a hammer. Oh. Oh, and of 
course they're just going to be a bear. Well, I've actually got a gear puller. It should work. These are pretty rusted up. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, so I thought I bought a puller one time when I was at Princess Auto. So I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try it. Ooh, there's a bit of tension there. Oh, these are on there. There's pegs yelling at the screen. Buy some torches. Holy cow. That thing is on there. Oh boy. <laughs> Old trucks are awesome. You'd think it'd be a simple job pulling this slack adjuster off, but no, no it's not. It's just gonna be a bear. folks anti-seize is your friend don't be afraid to use it because whoever put these on years ago did not use any i can't believe something as simple as this has taken me so much time like this is fully loaded you can see it's just bent right over i mean obviously it'd be better if i was straight on but that's a hell of a lot of tension i got on there and it's not oh, it's the wrong way, Mark. Oh my god. I guess I might this might be the the final breaking point for twin sticks to get torches because I don't know how else to get this thing off of here. Just I can't believe it's that seized on there. I guess I could put some like uh, penetrant oil in there or something, but I mean, it's almost like it's welded in there. It's crazy. And this is number one of four. Odds are if this one's that bad, they're all gonna be the same or worse. Oh man. All right, so I finally broke down, came over to OxyPro and they have this little kit here. Now I know it's kind of Mickey Mouse and small, but for what I'm doing for removing bolts and stuff, this should work. So let's get it back home and see if we can't get those buggers off of there. Now we're ready to, don't need this anymore. Now we're ready to do some damage. Okay, so let's see what I got here. Now again, this is a, this is a smaller setup, but for heating up bolts and, and doing a little bit of work that I need to do, I think this is gonna be fine. So, okay, green is oxygen. So we'll put the, the regulator deal on there. Give it a turn out so we can see it. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done the old oxyacetylene. Good and tight. Make sure they're both closed. I guess they'd have to be here. Probably wouldn't have made it home. All right. So uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. So now loosen off both regulators. We'll open the oxygen up. Oh, it seems to be passing. If I just get this tightened up. There we go. Okay, open up oxygen all the way, and you can see there's about 2,000 psi. So that's uh, that's serious pressure in the oxygen tank. 
Now with the acetylene, uh, again, that's loose. We'll open that one up and we're only gonna open that one up about a half. The logic there is if there's a problem, this is your explosive gas. You can quickly reach over and shut her down. So with that now, now I gotta set up the regulator. So close that. We'll open this one all the way because it's, it's controlled here. And then I'll start cranking this up to about uh, 20 PSI for the oxygen. And then we'll start cranking him up to about, I don't know, six or seven, something like that. And then we should be ready to give her a go. Let's open the acetylene first. Hang on. There it goes. I'll try it the other way. There we go. <laughs> We're cooking with peanut oil. Okay, something like that. And then we'll add some oxygen. Oh, yeah, burnt right out. Okay, rookie. Open that up. You sure don't need to open that up much. There, something like that. Just want to get rid of the soot. And then we'll add a little bit of oxy to it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Is our gauge is looking? All right. Okay, now I'm not going to cut because... I wanted to heat this bugger up. So let's go ahead and move in there and give it a little bit of heat. See if we can't get it nice and toasty hot. Oh, this should work a lot better than the, uh, the plumber's torch I was using. Now I suppose I could cut this off of here. Getting nice and cherry hot. Okay. Turn the oxygen off, turn the acetylene off. <clears throat> now we will put this guy on here. Where's my impact? Ugh. Still. Okay. All right, we'll put more heat on the other side. all the grease and don't worry folks I got the fire extinguisher right handy just in case anti seize folks when you assemble brake components or anything on a semi truck use anti-seize so you don't have to deal with stuff like this or you don't punish the next guy or gal oh the grease is just bubbling out of there now and of course i lit it on fire come on really am i gonna have to cut this thing in half Kidding me? Man, I 
thought this torch is going to be the solution. Wish that stupid thing wasn't full of grease. <sighs> That's got to be a record for most seized slack adjuster. smell of burnt grease in the morning. Oh, it smells just lovely. folks I don't know I don't know what's going on here I cut the outer ring it's just it's welded it's welded itself together it just it won't budge I mean I can't believe that's not pulling it off of course my hardwood's starting on fire oh, great. but seriously has anyone out there seen a slack adjuster with this seized on there? I mean, uh, it's just insane. so positive oh yeah it'll be easy I'll just uh, I'll just pull the slacks off we'll put new cans on you walk in the park no I'm gonna spend half a day getting one slack adjuster off tell you one thing it's sure making me want to reuse reuse these old ones power fist so that's enough I'm done okay, come on. really this thing is probably still hot come on that last half inch you're not gonna come on Come on! Yes! What a bunch of garbage. <sighs> okay, one down, three to go. Well, God hates a coward, so I guess I'll I'll try and get this one off of there. 
Fingers crossed it's not as bad as the other side was. Oh, where is that? Oh, it rolled way up there. I should, uh, I'm going to have to save that as a memento on my, uh, on my sh uh, shelf of fame there. That uh, persistence pays off. Now, what are the chances that this, so well, I guess I got to go find a, the nut that I lost. Uh, what are the chances that this one just slides off of there? Yeah, just a no. Well, my OCD will drive me nuts, so if I leave, if I have one new one and one old one, I might leave those two up there because you can't really see them. But I think what I'll do is I'll attempt to get this guy off of here. As painful as that's going to be. I tell you what, this has been one of the hardest, smallest jobs that I've ever done. Just insane. But I think it's coming now. My impact's giving up the ghost. I don't know what's wrong with it, so maybe it's just because it's on an angle and doesn't like that. So I can actually get this off by hand. Come on, real. Okay. Oh, come on now. Don't fall off on me. Oh. Hang on. It's going to come off. This thing's gonna be toasty. <laughs> okay, so I'm back at it again. I just cut the air lines because I'm gonna obviously run new ones. And I just undid the bolts of the impact, and there's the old air cans. And yeah, it looks like. These ones must have been replaced somewhere along the way because again it's got the sealed ring whereas the ones in the front still have the bolt and it's interesting I, I wonder when they switched over and why they switched over I'm sure there was probably a few people that opened it up when they shouldn't have okay so here's the new here's the new 3030 and again it's still got the the sealed ring and I, I wonder if I need to to clock this when I say clock it what I mean is essentially you could put air pressure in um, you could put air pressure in the park side and that would that would uh, compress the spring and then you can use what's called a cage bolt that's a bolt here now a lot of truckers will take these out of here because of course you don't want to leave them in and get all the salt and slush and road grime on them so they'll take them out of there and put them in the glove box I think that's a pretty good idea but essentially once you have this the spring compressed you can put this bolt in there and lock it and it'll hold the spring tight you can take the air off and it'll keep it in place then once it's safely caged you can actually loosen the front bolt off and i just loosen it a little bit and then you can clock the mounting bolts what i mean by that is you can turn it because of course you've got your two holes in parallel there um, and now if you don't have if the airline if the ports are on the side and you don't want them there, you got to clock it and turn them up. But I think in this case, I actually might get lucky because they're at the top. So, get that through the hole. Yeah, ha, perfect. I don't know. Hopefully, the other the other ones are like that. But that's actually that's good news. That's going to save me some work. So maybe the trucking gods are being kind to me after watching me struggle with those slacks. Okay, so they, me and they mentioned in the uh, instructions to not 
use an impact to tighten this. And I think they just don't want to, they don't want you to rattle around these these cans because, and that springs under some pretty good, uh, pretty good preload. But I'm going to pretend I didn't see that because you're supposed to torque these up to 100 foot pounds. So I'll just put this on setting one, which is like that. And I'm just going to, this is just for mocking up purposes. I won't ugga dugga it too many times. There, something like that. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so now we get to the, the measuring part. Okay, so the proper procedure for this, at least I think it's the proper procedure, is to cage the brakes to do this. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to trick it and let it think that it's getting truck air but essentially I'm just giving it uh, shop air on the park brake side so that's the the one closest to the outer spring chamber and I'm going to put air into it if I can grab my air hose and you're going to see the rod go in so now I'm going to pull the cap off at the end and I'll probably go down on the inside and we're going to put in the cage bolt, which is basically just the bolt with a T in it. I just want to make sure it gets engaged. Okay. And you just give it, once it goes into the slot, you just give it a quarter turn. And then we're just going to put the nut on and snug it up. Of course, the air is holding the spring compressed. Three quarter inch, like I say, just tighten it a little bit. Just want to make sure that it's fully caged. Okay. Now I can leave the air on there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. So now, what I need to do is, well, I should probably torque these nuts too. Well, it says 100 to 140. I thought the reason I just kind of did it with the impact quickly is because I thought I might take it off of there to cut which I may still have to do well no because I'll take the measurements and then I'll release this and then it'll come back out and there should be enough room to me for me to get the, the grinding wheel in there so between 120 and 140 so how about we split the difference there we go there we go. Okay. So cage torqued. Now I need to, a couple things I need to do to measure out where to cut this. So first up is, is to get center line from the S cam. So I'll use this square. I figure. Okay. And then next up, you measure the clevis. Ah. Uh, the inside of the clevis. So, the inside from this flat edge here to the center line there. And that's about inch and a quarter, I'd say. Inch and a quarter. Looks good. So then you go backwards uh, up the shaft from that first mark. You go towards the um, towards the brake chamber. So what did I say? Inch and a quarter. So that'll be my second mark. Inch and a quarter. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then the third mark. Well, I wonder. Maybe I'll bring the camera closer so you can see what I'm up to here. So this first mark is the center line to the S cam. So that's your that's your first mark. Then the next one is I took off the inch and a quarter for the clevis, the inside center line of the pin to the inside of the clevis. And then the third one here is an inch and a half back. Don't worry about that one. I don't know what I was doing there. An inch and a half back because this 3030 brake chamber 
they talk about it on the internet, but this particular model has um, inch and a half usable travel. So you go from your second mark and you go an inch and a half back from that. So that's going to be my, my cut mark. So then what I like to do as well is to have the, the lock nut on the inside of where I'm going to cut it because that's why when I grind this off of here, I can back this off and it'll clean up the threads as it comes off. That way the clevis will go on there nicely and lock in place. And then I can go get a bunch of anti-seize because I don't want to have the same problem that I just had or set that up for the next person and put on the slack adjuster and put the pin in and I should be able to have this one just about uh, done. So I'll go ahead and get at her and uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so I got the two brake chambers on there. I got the push rods cut to the right length, hopefully. Um, got the both slack adjusters put on there and adjusted. Now, if you saw that I actually had this side on and I took it off, it's because my OCD got the better of me because the one I had on here only had two holes. And this one, the one I took out of the box here had one, two, three. So they wouldn't match and that bugged me. So I went back and looked and I, I got three of the three holes and then one of the two holes. So I thought, oh, what, they gave me the wrong part number? But check this out, 50448, 50448. So they must have just added that third hole somewhere along the way and this was older stock. So no big deal, swap that over. Uh, since there was anti seeds on there, it came off without any trouble. And then just to show, Good old twin sticks working out in the dirt again. Just to show how this works. So you'll notice that the brake shoes are tight against the drum right now because the pressure in the spring is pushing on the push rod, which is pushing this thing as hard as it can and applying all the spring pressure that's there to the brake, um, the brake shoes, which is pushing it against the brake drum and holding it in place. So uh, when you air up your truck, or air comes from the truck and fills up this tank and eventually when I get these lines done this is what would happen it would air this up and watch the slack adjuster go back see it moved back ever so slightly and now look there is a slight gap between the brake shoe and the drum so essentially what the slack adjuster does is it takes the slack out of the system and the way you do that is you adjust it oh hard on little twin sticks crawling underneath here. At least he's working outside though like he used to, right? So essentially what you do is you go till it goes tight. Oh, wrong way, Mark. Come on now. Okay. You go till it goes tight. And if you notice, there's no clearance there. So basically I took all the slack out of the system and then you go a quarter turn back from that. Oh, oh. come on, Mark. Again, it's hard to do single-handed. So a quarter of a turn back, and then you want to wiggle that so that comes back out. So now that's a quarter turn backed off from full applied. So now when I take this off of here, this guy goes back down. It just moves slightly. If you notice, it only moved, oh, I don't know, maybe a half inch of throw. And now the brake shoe is tight against the drum again. So the park brakes are set. So that's adjusted. So as I was saying in the beginning of this video, there are uh, slack adjusters now that have kind of a ratchet system and they're called a, an auto adjust. So you basically set them up once and then as the brake shoes wear and this has to push farther, it clicks and goes to the next tooth and adjusts and goes back into you know compliance. I don't trust them. Again, I'm old school. This is how I was taught 
when you're doing your pre-trip in the morning, I'd always get under the, uh, the gravel trailer when I was hauling and I would adjust well, both the tandems on the truck and then the, uh, the trailer brakes as well. Just to make sure that everything was safe and to slack or to take it, uh, to compensate for all the, the brake wear that I did slowing down on the old white mud and the yellowhead back in, back in the day, the Anthony Handy wasn't even around. So with that, um, these guys are adjusted, park brakes are set. I am not going to swap out those slack adjusters because it is just, it's too silly. I don't really see a problem with leaving the existing ones in there. And I think I'm almost out of acetylene. That little tank there, I wasn't getting much. I wasn't getting much for cutting power at the end there. So hopefully that's not it because those are, I think it was about 50 bucks to fill those things. So hopefully it lasts a little longer than that, but I did do a lot of a lot of heating to get those off of there. So I guess what I'll do now is <laughs> try and crawl out from under the truck, which proving exceedingly difficult the older I get. Ah! And I suppose since there's still a few hours left in the day here, what I'll do is I'll crawl under here and do the same process. Take these guys out of here. Uh, oh no, these ones. These ones are uh, the ring as well. Oh, I know where I saw the, the bolted ones. It was on the old tandem set that I took out of here. So this is a newer style with the 22 fives. The old original 70s tandem set that was on here uh, had the 20s and it had the bolted outer ring on the, uh, on the brake chamber. And the reason I remember that is because Dallas, before he left, he took the old tandems, flipped them upside down, and threw them on my car hauler trailer. And then I actually hauled it to the scrap yard, and I got a, I got a few bucks for the steel for that. So I was able to buy some, some Coors beer and a few more truck parts. So with that, I hope, uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I won't bother filming the last one because you guys already watched me put those in. So I'll put those last two brake chambers on. And then uh, I did talk with Dawn. And she's going to come and help me on a, on a future episode, a future Saturday, to put that reefer shell in place. So that'll be cool. I'm going to bring her forklift and we'll, we'll lift that up. And yeah, hopefully the wrap arrives soon. I still need to do a little bit of work with the old buffing wheel. There's still some, some CP rail letters if you can see them. So that's a nice evening project. So I'll tackle that. Like I say, I'll finish putting those 3030s on there. And then in the next episode, I guess I'll tackle the lights and hooking up the airlines and maybe I'll actually get the snowman truck in front of it and we'll uh, we'll make sure those brakes work. So with that I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate uh, you watching this stuff, uh, commenting, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff and yeah appreciate you following along on the build. So with that I will bid you farewell and I'll see you next week and don't ever forget if you got it, a trucker brought it. <laughs>